I, Dr. Gunjan Saxena, welcome all of you to Relish the Literary Feast. In this second lecture, I will discuss Wordsworth's another poem, Ode to Duty. This ode can be satisfactorily analyzed in the light of Indian philosophical thought which was imbibed by Wordsworth from the Gita where Lord Krishna elaborates various aspects of it, of karma to Arjun. His ode to duty appears to be a version of the Gita because of its moral, didactic and philosophical nature. After first reading of this poem, it appears something bizarre to have preachings on duty from that person who is well known for his spontaneous or flow of powerful feelings. As we know, nature and duty both seems contradictory in their nature. But if we analyze the poem minutely, we will find that duty referred by Wordsworth is not an adherence to an established traditional, religious or societal code. Rather, duty as Wordsworth elaborates here is a conscious devotion or dedication towards innocent pleasures, childlike aspirations, celestial bliss and an alignment with natural world. Now, he starts the poem by addressing duty as the stern daughter of the voice of God. O oh, duty is that name thou love, who art a light to guide, a rod to check the erring and reprove. The very first line of the poem reveals the spiritual value of duty in our life. Because it is addressed as voice of God. And that is, that is what is that uh, voice of God? That is inner voice, which always inspires us to do good and always checks us to do wrong. Now duty can be comprehended as the synonym of discipline also because uh, the poet says thou who are uh, thou who are victory and law when empty terrors over all from vain temptations dost set free and comest the weary strife of frail humanity. When it is said that freedom lies in discipline it seems paradoxical in tone but the deep rooted essence of it is quite similar if we are dutiful and disciplined in thoughts and deeds we can be the true and favorite devotee of god in fact Wordsworth clarifies that our efforts and actions should not be the result oriented rather our emphasis should be on duty itself because duty is considered to be the voice of god which means command of God. As Lord Krishna himself preaches in the Gita to Arjun, Karmanneva dhikaraste ma faleshu kadachana. It means do your duty, result is not of thy concern. Milton also speaks of the command of God in his epic Paradise Lost. God so commanded and left that command, sole daughter of his voice. Now in the last lines, the poet is sure that after developing this concept in the mind, we can avoid to be enmeshed into the trap of vain temptations. And by avoiding them, we can quieten the burdensome dilemma between loss and benefits, between getting and spending, etc. As it is said, we are reminded of here the famous line in Sanskrit, Sukhe dukhe same kratva labha labha jaya jaya. Now in the second stringer, Wordsworth indicates those philosophic mind young persons who possess the sense of duty consciously and willingly when he writes, Youth, glad hearts, without reproach or blot, who do thy work and know it not. Oh, if through confidence misplaced they fail, thy saving arms dread power around them. Past. He highlights that duty is not limited to societal or religious conformity, rather it is the childhood instinct which is deeply and spontaneously intermingled into the character of the youth. 
if such people go astray whenever their trust is misplaced duty itself comes forward to their rescue and puts them on the right path while performing this role duty becomes dread power or supreme power who acts like god it works in the same way as it is said asato ma sad gamaya tamso ma jyotir gamaya here in these lines you will see the poet manifest his passion as well as hope for pleasant and blissful future where love and joy will be dominating emotions among humanity serene will be our days and bright and happy will our teacher be when love is an unerring light and joy its own security they can guide us to lead the life in comfortable zone it becomes possible because by submitting to the creed and religion of duty people get inner strength of the soul so such persons seek the support of the duty whenever they feel it need in next stanza you will find that farsworth has not given up the childhood ideas and innocent thoughts rather he has recommitted himself to them i loving freedom and untried no sport of every random gust yet been to myself a guide to blindly have reposed my trust in childhood he often postponed the call of duty and preferred the easier paths of dalliance however in his youthful tenure of life he determines to follow the doctrine of duty more strictly as he says in these lines and oft when in my heart was hurt thy timely mandate he is referring to youth i deferred the task in smoother walks to stray but thee i now would serve more strictly if i may now see these lines i would like to first uh, quote here the lines of shakespeare which he said in the tempest freedom lies in service do you understand this line the meaning of this line here wordsworth also seems to fed up with the uncontrolled that is referred by the word unchartered here uncharted liberty he longs for a peaceful course of life like sthit pragya that's why he doesn't desire to take shelter of hope it is uh, really uh, to be understood deeply he knows the depth of philosophical truth where it is said asha hi parmam dukham nairashayam parmam sukham griefs lie in hopes and expectations and hopelessness is somewhat stoic position and it gives pleasures now the very first word addressing word to duty again you will find eastern law giver and in further lines you will see that yet thou dost wear the godhead's most benignant grace nor know we anything so fair as is the smile upon thy face now have you noted the point he has addressed duty as a law giver and the word is smile it gives the paradoxical that in spite of being stern the face of duty is smiling the connection between duty and nature now it is revealed here as he highlights the whole universe from the flowers up to the stars is bound to duty you have heard ratrir gavishyati bhavishyati suprabhatam you can understand it like this night will pass away and definitely there will be sunrise so after night day will be there so have you ever seen night after night or day after day have you ever seen the haphazard manner of weather occurrence nahi na suraj aur chandrama ne aaj tak duty leave nahi li so punctual they are in their duties the poet glads duty with the hue of a spirituality by calling her the god heads most benignant grace the reason behind it 
that the systematic ordering of nature which is maintained by duty is a reflection of god's will and benediction as he refers already in tintern away you will be reminded here of that those lines the earth to me did seem apparelled in celestial light now here in these lines he emphasizes duties ambler functions and seems to support the idea vidya vinayam dadati vinayat yati patrata it means knowledge provides humility and ambleness enables our personality in the real sense he says to ambler functions of all power i call thee i myself command unto thy guidance from this or oh let me weakness have an end wordsworth grows very emotional quite emotional and dedicated when he commends himself unto thy guidance from this or he desires to remove the weakness of choosing easier paths then he longs for intellectuality as well as humbleness both things he desires here we are reminded of milton again who says in paradise lost heaven is for the too high to know what passes there to lowly wise and he uh, says in the last lines give unto me made lowly wise the spirit of self sacrifice the confidence of reason give and in the light of truth thy bondman let me live ultimately he surrenders himself as a staunch follower of duty not as a blind adherence towards it rather to have a clear perception of of what is right and what is wrong so i hope you have enjoyed this elaboration expect to meet in the next lecture till then take care